Welcome to Help Desk with Joe, and this is show 100. We're here in Spencer, West Virginia, to Patch Turned Up Studio. With me, as always, Justin. Hey. And Joe. Morning, guys. It's show 100, boys. Here we go. I can't believe it. A century mark. I know, isn't it crazy? We fought through COVID, did remote. Joe worked out all the IT details and let us keep broadcasting this uh, Help Desk with Joe show. And uh, here we are, show 100. And cancel culture hasn't gotten to us. I know, that's amazing too. So it's either not enough people watching or we haven't pushed <laughs> the right button. I think they're just uh, charmed by our bad jokes and not very witty humor. Yeah. That's what it is. And they're just like, well, those guys are just harmless. Yeah. You know, they don't know any better, so we'll let them slide. Yeah, they're from West Virginia. What can they know? <laughs> <laughs> Their jokes aren't that good anyway, yeah. so it's not a big deal. Yeah, okay. Show 100. I, I can't, I'm with you, Justin. I mean, Joe and I have been doing this for, gosh, 10 years now, roughly, with Cena as well, jumping in and out. And and now we've got 100 under our belt here in this studio in a new setting uh, and doing the uh, podcast type setting and so forth. So, you know, as always, the A&M Digital Technologies uh, backing everything we've done for the last 10 years here at Patch. And uh, now 100 shows under our belt in this format. And uh, spectacular. Bloody brilliant, <laughs> as Joe would say. Yeah. All right, so on the docket for show 100 today, uh, Fitbit. Yes. Update us with Fitbit, and I know Fitbit's pretty popular. Yes, so uh, a lot of people don't know that Google actually bought Fitbit out a while back. So, S Oh, speaking of which, are we going to talk about Elon Musk buying Twitter? We can. You guys know about that? Yeah. Okay, I heard it on NPR this morning. Okay. Yeah, I thought... The way the news I assume the whole world knows, I, right? I, I didn't include that in my news lineup because the way people they they're already pounding know. over it one way or the other. Yeah, I just like I don't know I'll anything about it. I just heard it on NPR okay. quickly as a. But yeah, we can we can hit we can hit huh. the highlights. On I, I'm, well, I'm curious on your all's <laughs> take. I don't know enough about world news to know. So, uh, but it seems controversial. Maybe does that seem right? Well, yeah, it's maybe. It all depends on which side of the fence you're sitting on, I think. Huh. I don't have – what do you buy, Twitter? Yeah. Okay, that's right, because Facebook owns Instagram? Yes. Okay, so he bought Twitter, the other one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have – I mean, I have it, but I don't ever use it, so. Well, I, I have it. I use it very little. Justin, do you? No, nah, so it, it doesn't affect either, all three of us then. <laughs> so. Oh, man, what a way for a technology show. We don't even use Twitter. Come on now. Yeah. But, <sighs> but we may start now that Elon Musk has bought it. So Really? Who owned it before? Uh, it's just like a board of directors, right? Yeah. So the guy that was running it before, he was a ding-dong. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, he was the one that uh, Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> he was a ding-dong and a half. He was the one <laughs> that... Well, I, gotta keep I laugh because friendly. that's what I would say. Well, People look at me, I'm like, oh, gosh, what a ding-dong. And they're just, like, looking at me like, that's such a 1960s term. And I'm like, it's still relevant. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, still and, and we got to keep it family-friendly. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jack Dorsey, <laughs> he was the one that <clears> – and I'm trying not to get into politics here, but here's just what happened. Yeah. When – during the whole election thing, the New York – Post, you know, the longest running, most uh, respected news publication in America posted a story about President Biden's son and some questionable material with international dealings found on a laptop. Had evidence, had proof, had everything. They posted that story, the link to that story, on their Twitter feed. Well, he steps in, Jack Dorsey steps in and bans that account and goes, you can't do that. I bet I know why. Because it was... It was it's owned by Rupert Murdoch, uh, who also owns Fox Entertainment Channel. Yeah. So he steps in and goes, you can't do that. Why? So now you're censoring the press. And there's just been stuff like that. We got. Uh, I remember you and I talking about this because I kind of disagree with you. He owns it. It's his business, so he can decide what he wants. Right, but it, but at the same time, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very— It's a moral dilemma, I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I would see that as, like, if a local businessman downtown said, you know, sorry, but I don't want to carry your product. Right. And a person walks in and says, well, you have to because I'm a newspaper. You have to carry my newspaper. And he said, no, I don't have to because I own the business. Right. So I, that's yeah, how other, I see it. The other thing was Alex Jones getting banned. For Who's that? 
conspiracy theorist guy who oh, said that gosh, Sandy yeah. Hook was a bunch of child yeah, and he's now under lawsuit. Yeah, and to be dead. Yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh gosh. Have, yeah, just been issues with Twitter censored. Trying yeah. to figure out a way to police it, but well, and, and you wonder, yeah, with Musk, is he pretty much going to go completely hands off and? free for all whatever you can say whatever you want right well with i mean it's one of those within mm. reason i mean you can't see that i could kind of see that though because newspaper has its journalism has its own well let me put it this way real journalism has its own <laughs> rules right you're not allowed to slander anybody in a real uh journalistic setting and i can't, say that by can't as in call somebody a pedophile with no evidence for right. right 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 whereas like now there are entertainment yeah, you know, like People Magazine, since they're under entertainment, not under news. They don't fall under the news. Yeah, they're like umbrella. a soap opera. They can say whatever they want, and it doesn't matter. Right. I, I think. I don't right. Know, I'm not a journalistic person but as much, but well, and I've anyway. S- and I've seen firsthand, uh, when we started our other podcast, mm-hmm. the, I started, I created a Twitter handle and all that, uh-huh. and it was funny. When I created the account, I literally said, this is an entertainment, mm-hmm. movies, right. television, that's it. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. No news, no politics, no nothing. The first 20 people, it said, here's here's uh, people we, we think uh, would fall into your uh, scope of people that you should follow. Yeah. Top 20 people. The top 10 were political leaders of a particular party, and I'm not getting in. Huh. Yeah, I was like, time out. Is this the Mountain State Party? No. <laughs> That's like I that would have made sense to me. They're like, hey, you're from right. West Virginia. Here, yes. Here's your fellow. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I would get that, but it's not even like our state representatives at a national uh-huh. level or anything uh-huh. like that. It was like high uh, political leaders of a particular party. It's like you know, everybody says that you're you know you're trying to skew everything one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Well, that right there is pretty much evident to me because like I don't care if you're wanting to promote political parties or not, but yeah. if you're going to do it. Why aren't you showing both sides? And literally, I told you that this is an entertainment movie and television. Why aren't there actors and actresses and comedians and stuff like that? Because they want you to be entertained by the real actors. The real circus? Yeah, the real circus, (laughs) the real comedians in the world. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Okay, anyway, so uh, back, Justin, thank you. Back on track, back on track. Fitbit. Yes. Uh, Anyway, we'll we'll revisit this whole Elon Musk thing once it hits real news, I guess. Well, or when it becomes solid in the news. Well, so summarize, so since he's going to take over, yeah, or since he's taking over, it's going to be interesting to watch. It's one of those, I, I, yeah. the jury's still out on what's going to happen. Well, it's just interesting that, you know, these companies are valued at, like, so much money, but have never actually made money. Like yeah. Made, so two, except 2000 and 2018 and 19, they are trade the only years where they made a profit. They trade on people, man. They That's how it works. They money every other year that they've been in the system. Yeah, that's one thing I've never understood. Twitter has always lost money, but yet they're still in business. But somebody sees the potential in it, that you can turn it around and make money somehow. Targeted yeah. ads, I guess, maybe. Oh, that you trade information. That's a uh, well. Did we watch the social dilemma? Did yes. We watch it? Yeah. 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 So I mean, if if there's nothing being traded, it's people. Yeah. It's information. So yeah. Okay. All right. Anyway, Fitbit. All right. Hey, going it, Justin. Fitbit. <laughs> So Fitbit is mm. adding AFib detection feature to their watches. Ooh. Yeah. That's pretty wild. So this feature will be available on nine different Fitbit models in the coming weeks. Google announced earlier this month that Fitbit ha- was granted clearance from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for its atrial fibrillation detection algorithm. Now Fitbit owners should be on the lookout for the new feature. In the coming weeks, the algorithm will be rolling out across nine Fitbit devices, Google confirmed. These devices are the Charge 5, the Versa 3, the Sense, the Versa 2, the Charge 4, Charge 3, Lux, Inspire 2, and Versa Lite are all compatible with the algorithm, which can point to signs of AFib. Nice. So here's how it's That's going. a huge safety feature. Yes. I can't believe it took them this long. <laughs> now, why can't we be in those kind of meetings where somebody's like, hey, you know what we could do? Bloody brilliant. Yeah. And everybody's like, true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of meeting I want to be in on. It's one of the things that just it just makes sense. Yeah. So the algorithm <laughs> works by passively assessing your heartbeat rhythm. If it comes across anything that suggests possible AFib, 
an irregular and often rapid heartbeat, it will then alert you through the irregular heart rhythm notification feature. Nice. So I still am amazed it took us this long for a smartwatch to get there because they've been doing <coughs> your heart rate for who knows how long. Well, Apple just got approved a couple years ago. So I mean, for heart rate? Yeah. Well, that's Apple. Well, you know, <coughs> they're three years behind everything else. Well, I think since it's one of those things, the technology is so new that yeah. th the FDA is really putting their feet to the fire. It's like, we're going to make sure we're going to do this right the first time. That's what they want to make sure we do right the first time? That's interesting. I know it's scary, isn't it? It is, you know. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, we do up here at Patch, we do a lot of food sustainability stuff. <laughs> Check and see, uh, you know, like how a food recall works. That'll <laughs> scare you to death. <laughs> Now, I'm serious on that one. All, all if I you know, don't know how a food recall works, you need to really look it up and see. Because, wow. It, do either of you know how it works? Mm -mm. No, I haven't shared this with you. Okay, so for a food recall to happen, the FDA does not do an actual food recall. They are just the messenger. The business itself is has to report it. So it's self-reporting. Oh, yeah. And then the FDA just shares that. So we did a big presentation. This is back before COVID. I don't know how many people were in. It was a lot of people in the room, you know, like 400 or something. But uh, wherever we were, St. Louis or like, I don't even know. We were somewhere. It was, it was like a bigger city. So I did 17 or 18 days because I remember it was like September and there were 18 days in. And uh, I just did the chicken recalls for the region or the area, you know, we were in. Right. And in 18 days, they had like 40-some recalls. <laughs> and uh Everybody had chicken for lunch. This I, I didn't. <laughs> but I was like, hey, who all had the chicken, you know? And the majority of the room raised their hand. I said, okay, well, here's the here's the 30-some recalls just on chicken just for this area. And some of them were frozen meals. So wh how it worked was the chicken company that issued the recall had already dispersed their chicken to four different companies that in turn dispersed it to their lower-end companies. And it all went into frozen uh, meals. Okay. And then got dispersed. So... The, the way the dispersion happened, there was no way to get it all back. <laughs> yeah, it and it had an expiration right. date that was a good year past whatever that day is like, you know, January of a year and a half later that those all expired. Yeah. So all that chicken went out into the world. No way to get it back. They made a voluntary recall. And we're sitting there, and I was talking to uh, Zach about it. I was like, why would they voluntarily recall? You know, it doesn't even seem to be rec any recourse. Why wouldn't they just let it go? And he's like, it's got to be because somebody's going to eat the chicken, die, and then the family will sue them. Otherwise, why would they care? If you're just going to get sick, how would you ever know? Right. Because, you know, you eat three, four meals a day. It's hard to tell how you track it back to one thing. Goes, right, right. But if somebody dies, then they might put in the effort to track it back. Right. He goes, so it has to be that startling that somebody's probably going to die from it or multiple people. And then it gets tracked back to them for them to issue their own food recall. And then the FDA just spreads it out. Yeah. So... We had that whole conversation, and I dropped that to me, and everybody's going, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> there are days when it's good to be a vegetarian. But here's the crazy part. Lettuce gets, all you know, 96% of our lettuce comes from California and Arizona. And, uh, you know, when they have a big salmonella or E. coli break out there, which mm -hmm. is kind of crazy, you think that poop somehow is breaking out on lettuce. That's scary in itself. Yeah. But, um, you know, <sighs> hard to fight the food battle. This is my stance today. Food is critical right now. Yes. The way food's handled, the crap and chemicals that go in our food, it's bad news. There are recalls every single day. Well, it's one of those, again, you get sick, you literally have no idea what you... Oh, you know, yeah. Well, I mean... They can track... You can get it tracked back. Right. I mean, you know, but, but if you get sick, down. you're... You, then you're sitting there going, okay, what did I eat today uh -huh. that could have... Or is it just like a stomach bug or yeah. a cold or the flu? You, you never really know, but if you get food poisoning, you know, the doctors can work it backwards. But, mm -hmm. you know, still it's just one of those things where... Yeah, I've, had, I've had food poisoning before, and not to be too gross, but I it, I was very easy to figure out what, what oh, caused yeah. it. <laughs> you know, what's weird is I think, you know, your body's like, ooh, I'm not eating that again for a while because... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you kind of associate that with it. Yeah. So, yeah, funny stuff. Anyway, I don't even know how... Justin, how do we even start talking about this? I don't even know what you... Jeez Louise. Got me? <laughs> yeah, one job, man. <laughs> one job. It's a hard job. It is a hard job, but yeah. Well, it somehow went from AFib to this. Okay. Oh, because the USDA issue. lets everything go. Okay. The FDA. FDA, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, the USDA and the Food and Drug Administration don't really chaperone a whole lot. Mm, got it. They don't have enough they people. I mean, it's crazy. They don't have enough people. They don't have enough anything. So, yeah, it only takes. It's kind of crazy. I know some. Uh, another bomb I'll drop on you. Some medication for depression. It only has to have two successful trials to pass. So I know one of them, one of the big uh, stirs was one had like had to do 280 some studies to get two that were showed positive effects. As soon as they did, though, FDA approved. So 278 negative, <laughs> two positive. It's a win. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody <We're> brilliant. brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I always roll my eyes and semi laugh at these medicines uh -huh. that you see on TV. It's like. Do you uh, have itchy, watery eyes? Yeah. Well, here here's the list of side effects, and it's oh the side effects gosh. are ten times worse than itchy, watery eyes. I know. Eyes. Isn't that crazy? Yes. And then you got to take medicine for the side effects. Yeah. I have this conversation. Which could cause more. Yeah, we have this conversation a lot because my mom, you know, of course, elder age and some stuff going, you know, here or there, and she's like, I got to take this. I was like, what are the side effects? You know, let's talk about this and see if it's worth it. She's like, oh, my gosh, the list of side effects is like 20 side effects long. Yeah. You know, so kind of crazy. I don't know. That's the culture we live in. We got to we got to turn it around and get off medicine, and get on healthier food. That's my soapbox for the day, Joe. Yep. <laughs> anyway, all right, Fitbit, AFib. Yeah, it's doing great things. Yep. I wonder if my watch does our watch have it, Justin? We have Garmin's carry that stuff. Uh, I know mine doesn't. Mine tells me when my stress gets too high. Huh? So, really? Yeah, like uh, we were at a track meet, and you know, got excited because everything was going, you know, right. My kids pole vault and stuff, and yeah. We were having a really good meet, and I was like, yeah, you know, my watch is warning me. Your stress is high. Slow down and breathe. <laughs> I like I like it when it does that because I'm like, man, I'm in the middle of, you know, exciting stuff here. Uh, yeah. That's part of – that's what's so good about it. You yeah, get excited. Yeah, right. But then I'll be driving 70 miles an hour down the interstate, and it'll say, uh, time to wake up and get moving. And I'm like, dude, I'm doing 70 miles an hour down the interstate. I'm moving right along. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the little things we – entertain ourselves with <laughs> justin dag on it <laughs> all right what's up next google play google play so google hold play. on what is google play uh it's it's our app store on our phones okay just making sure that's what i thought yeah so google play is now going to show how apps use your data Ooh. yes so this feature requires developers to disclose how apps collect share and secure user data so uh Google launched this yesterday, and the feature is meant to show people, sa show people <laughs> safety and privacy guidelines before they download an app, such as how data is collected, protected, and used. Hold on. Does this mean that you still have to read the terms and conditions, or not? Pretty much. <laughs> well, it's one of those... <laughs> I always laugh because everybody's like, oh, well, I didn't know it did that. And I'm like, dude, you had six pages of terms and conditions that you ignored just like everybody does. Right. It's so. one of those, at least now Google's <laughs> saying, hey, we did our due justice. We warned yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so speaking of which, uh -huh. uh, shows you how launch, how much people don't read terms and conditions. Uh, Peacock, the streaming service. Yeah. If you're a fan of the office, you'll appreciate this if you don't know it already. Inside the terms and conditions, it actually gives you the recipe for Kevin's chili. Really? Yeah. It's it, it's built right in the terms and wow. conditions. Wow. And I don't know how long it was there, but literally I read an article one day. It was like somebody had had read the terms and conditions and found that little nugget inside the terms and conditions. It's amazing that somebody sat down and said, you know what, there's probably something in there. Have You You guys uh, familiar with Ready Player One? Uh, I've heard, I've not watched movie, it. There's a book series. Yeah, the book's really good. Okay. Book two's okay. Book one's really good. The movie's I so so. But uh, it's about, they have this, so the world's in such a rough shape, ironically, like similar maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but people, like you go to school and stuff, everything's virtual. You know, you go to school, you put on your virtual headset, you sit in a virtual classroom. You know, it's like a, a player one. The whole thing is ready player one is what it says when you log in. You log into your account. So you can go to any school you want virtually and sit in a classroom, you know, and, and it has little signs that say when you're not paying attention, you know, stuff like that. Like if you take your headset off or whatever, it says you're whatever. So um, and you have access to all these free libraries, free books, free videos. So it's like going to a massive online university with – but in real virtual world, I guess. Okay. Like your body walks like a, a sh pl whatever you call the player one games, the shooting games. Yeah, first person. Yeah, yeah, it's like first person. And uh, the whole premise is 
you can visit all these like they got massive universes things like massive so imagine multiple universes planets and you can gather up and do you know it's just like a first person game you gather up weapons and stuff like that yeah but inside are these easter eggs you got to find three eggs and then if you whoever finds those does wins you know massive prize blah 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 so there are these people are combing through like terms and conditions looking for these little nuggets and hints and clues but it's just massive so they've been looking for 20 years hmm. anyway and so you know it's just one of those things where you know people read through like terms and conditions just hmm. to find those little things yeah and I, when i was reading the book i was just like man that's got to be terribly boring yes <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just massive amount of hours just reading through crap and looking at boring stuff because you just never know. Right. And if you go back to, like, any of the Legend of Zelda games or, you know, Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. They had a lot of those little things in there that you just didn't know until you, like, the little warp things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah until you had to go find them. Yeah, you had just had to keep playing around, not trying to solve it, but just trying to look for hidden nuggets. Yeah, because the thing with, like, the terms and conditions, that's not even something you could do with an algorithm because yeah. the algorithm wouldn't even pick up on it. All right, you just got to go look and yeah. read and boring. But so somebody found Kevin's chili recipe <laughs> yeah. in the terms and conditions of Peacock. Yes. Streaming. Yes. Wow. I wonder what percentage are sharing your data with other third parties. That's one of them. It'll tell you whether the app is sharing with third parties. I'm sure they all do. That's how they make money. Yeah. That's it, what I mean. That's probably more than what you really or want to realize or yeah or want to know. accept. I don't know. At this point, though, I'm kind of just like, well, whatever. You know, my information's got to be out there anyway. Right. So, I don't know. If they're that interested in how I drive to and from work and go to and from the sports fields and to and from Walmart or Kroger's, then have at it. Yeah. Of course, i got to say, Kroger's does a really good job of tracking what I buy and uh, sending me coupons and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I love their, their curbside service. I haven't done that yet because I can never time it. I'm so sporadic when I go through Ripley. Well, I don't think you have to be there on that time. It's like they have it really by that time. Well, they offer times to be picked up, and it's always like evening. And I'm Get always on your way home. Well, I'm always there in the afternoon, though. Because Cena and I, we tested this. Huh. This was before the pandemic. This is when Sadie was a baby. Yeah. I we remember you talking about yeah, that. Yeah. We tested it, and like she got stuff, like put them to the test, like strawberries and uh -huh. stuff like that. And you would think, oh, it's the, the delivery. They'll bring just because you don't get to pick. All right, right. My opinion, it looked fresher than what was anything could have been on the show. Really? Yeah, I didn't go in to do a comparison, but like yeah, the strawberries. look good. Yeah, they looked perfect. The potatoes was perfect. The, nice. I mean, because Cena Stungle put them to the test. She's going to order stuff that I know. Yeah. Let's see if they mess it up. And, huh. and what's then they the, didn't. What's the charge on that? Uh, I think I think they'll do like a trial. Like you can do like first two or three pickups for free, and then after that it was like, or five dollars oh wow that's a huge time saver oh yeah well i'm thinking the five bucks is well worth it from my point because i'm spending less money because i know if i go inside i guarantee i'm gonna come out with a buggy load of stuff <laughs> and a pretty good chance i'm not gonna come out with what i went in for that is such a big point because i yeah i promise you every time i go in there i probably buy twenty dollars worth of stuff that i never thought i would i didn't need yeah but i walk out like oh i'm kind of hungry yeah that looks good yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, check this out. Wow, all right. And then right. you're taking a gamble on walking out with what you actually went in for. There's a lot of times <laughs> that I do forget what I originally went for. So it's like, yeah, five bucks. Yeah, some people may go, I wouldn't pay that. Well, think about it. If you Like in Dave's <laughs> case, that five bucks, oh, I just saved you 15 bucks. Oh, easy, that. easy. <laughs> and you know, the funny part was I just I went, I went stopped at Kroger's Monday, maybe? I don't know, or Sunday? Sunday or Monday. And uh, got home, and Katie's like, where's my cranberry grape juice? I'm like, What? She's like, it was on the list. It was the only thing I really put on the list. I was like, what list? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, and I texted you. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Is that what I went there for? Because <laughs> I got four bags of stuff. Are you sure something you wanted is not in there? Yeah. She's like, no, I just wanted that. I was like, all right. So the next day, guess what? I had to stop and get it. But, but yeah, I, I do that all the time. I'm like, I forgot what I ordered the game for. What are we talking about? Hey, Justin, come on, man. <laughs> Show 100. We're, We're struggling. About, uh, Google Play. Oh, uh, Google Play in terms of conditions. Yeah. And then yeah. Ready Player One, now Kroger. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the new section is going to show you whether a developer is collecting data and for what purpose, whether the developer is sharing data with third parties, the app security practices like encryption of data in transit, and whether a user can ask for data to be deleted, 
whether a qualifying app has committed to following Google's Play's Families policy, which is designated to better protect children in the Play Store, and whether the developer has validated its security practices against the global security standard, more specifically the mobile application security assessment. Okay. So Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, so basically Google is putting putting checks and balances in place on these developers saying, okay, we're going to put your feet to the fire yeah. now. Do it sounds like they covered a lot of bases. Yeah. Hmm. Do you think, does anybody care? I mean, do developers care to add that information, do you think? Or is well, it if they're they're like, if oh, shoot, now we got to disclose everything and it probably won't make us popular? Or do you think they're just going to sit there and say, well, everybody's going to do what, you know, this guy does and just check it anyway and go on? I think it's going to be one of those case-by-case bases because if yeah. they're on the up and well, up. Hold on, let's put it to the test. Okay. You're an IT guy. Yes. Will this make you look closer at what's happening with the app you use? If it's an app I hadn't heard of, okay, I it it'll cause me to possibly look at stop and look at it more because I mean if it's Facebook, I know what they're doing with your information. <laughs> and <laughs> right, it, right. And it's not if good. it's one of the more popular. So yeah, uh, I don't know. Is there what's the last app you uploaded uh, that you could share with us? Uh, the last app or I downloaded. downloaded uh, the, the new Starlink app. I was doing a Starlink install for a customer this week. Okay. So did you question it, or you're familiar with that? No, that that's the first time I've okay. messed did with Did you question it and read through the terms and conditions or whatever, or do you just like, ah, it's starting? No, because the customer's not going to pay me to sit there and read <laughs> terms and conditions. Okay. Well, I mean, you weren't concerned, though. Well, no, because it was one of the things that it's a one-time, on my end, it's a one-time deal. I'm using it to install, and right. then I'm going to install it, and I'm going to be done with it. Right. So, okay. a, but from the app itself, the information it was asking me was kind of a knuckleheaded kind of thing. It's like, why would you, like, for me to change the Wi-Fi password. Right. I had to log in with the customer's email address or Starlink account just to get into the router itself to change the password. I thought, well, that's kind of dumb. Yeah. But, huh. okay. to well, each zone. Right. I just mean, but, you would probably have way, I, actually, I'm. No, you would have way higher standards of what you download app wise yeah. than what I'm sure Justin and I would. I don't know Justin's preferences, but um, I'm at the point where I'm like, yeah, if I want to use this app, I'm going to yeah. check well, it and not read it because I don't feel like having wasting time. Most of the time, your biggest uh, gotcha apps are like these free keyboards or free emoji downloads or stickers or whatever, and these, these little add ons that you can add onto your text messages. Really? Uh, a lot of those can get sketchy real quick with. Huh user data and all that okay yeah so that's what i mean you d you have higher standards that's what i was asking yeah. so yeah you're the person to say okay how much should we be worried about this well I, i'm how closely should we read the fine print well so according to this it's not going to be a 20 page little thing it's right. going to be you open the app in the app store and it'll be just a couple disclaimer. lines disclaimer yeah okay a right. quick blurb to let you decide i mean i guess that's good they're they're looking after our interests here at least yeah, the best that can yeah, be done yeah, that they're finally stepping up and going, you know what? Yeah. We To get these people to shut up and leave us alone, why don't we just make everybody do it? Yeah. And a little disclaimer. Right. Yeah. Give them the cliff notes so they don't have to read the whole thing. Right. Because <laughs> they know no one is. So. That's a exactly. great point. Great point. <laughs> cliff notes to make it easy. Boil it down. Yeah. Because I, I think, I, I don't know, what about you, Justin? Is that something that you would be like, all right, if there's five bullet points I need to read, I, I'll probably take the time to read them, or are you just going to get, eh, it doesn't matter anyway? Yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to at least check out those bullet points. Yeah. You <laughs> seem pretty thorough in what you do, so I could yeah, see you reading them. I'm not, definitely not going to read a user agreement that way. Yeah. 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 So it, I think it will be interesting once all the comp all the uh, developers who fall in line with this mm -hmm. to go back and look at the apps that you already use on right. a daily basis and see what – because it may be shocking on what information you're sharing. That, that you're sharing that you didn't realize. It's like, wait a minute. Well, this app does this. It has nothing to do with that that type of data it's sending right, out. Right. And then it'll make you question why. Oh, it's money. Oh, I know it's money, but it, but trying to trying to yeah. connect those dots. Hey, you know what we should celebrate for show one hundred? What's that? We can no longer make fun of Justin. Did you convert? Yep. Wow. Breaking news: Justin goes Samsung. <laughs> yep. Android. That's He's an Android user now, so. He no longer has to wait three years to get the apps he wants to use. <laughs> well, I noticed a little extra pep in his step yep. this morning. Yeah. So that might he knew be he wasn't going to get uh, you know, <laughs> given a hard time about some Apple update news stuff. So, so Justin, what phone did you get? The one 
The one show where there's not an Apple Store. Yeah. <laughs> 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 ah, nice. I can't pile on today. That's, hey, now you're on the, the good side of things. You can pile on Apple and, you know. Yeah, I got what, Galaxy S21. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Looks very sleek. Have you started downloading apps and stuff? No, nah, I'm w- working baby steps getting into it. But. I know. It's kind of – so now that you've – I kind of consider I mean, I Apple users out. are in a closet. You can't really use yeah. anything except the apps that are already there. So now that door has been thrown open and there's a big world out there. Yeah. yeah. You can get all kinds of apps. I might, can't even figure might, out how to turn the phone off. Might want to peruse day. through the uh, – you know the terms and conditions. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that they're there. But there's all kinds of apps you can use now. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, if you want, we can talk about it next week. Okay. Go in a little more yeah, detail as little far as, as okay. well. Uh, we we we. How we about the transition? If for somebody that's, that's interested what in transition, yeah, that's what I want to talk go. about is uh, okay. one one episode on that, and then another episode of you review, reviewing the phone. Gotcha. Yeah, I like it. I like the transition idea because I mean I've always been Android. So. Yeah. Well, I, I've done it. I did it years ago. Yeah. And, and I, it's got to be easier now yeah. than it was. We'll start taking some notes, Justin, yeah, on the pros and cons of transitioning or things that people need to know. You get so used to a certain type of but- button press doing a certain thing, so it's uh-huh. going to be different. It's going to be a little bit of an adjustment. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. like, ingrained in your head. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Button. You actually have a back button now, yeah. a home button. <laughs> you know. It's amazing. <laughs> 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 All right. Anyway, what were we talking about? <laughs> Google Play. Google Play. Google Play. Terms, conditions, and cliff notes. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Yeah. Third vert, third story breaking today. Venmo. Venmo. Yes. Don't know what Venmo is. Venmo is... Wait, is this a pay pay money to people app? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're owned by PayPal. So it's... What? Yeah, PayPal owns them. It's a spin off of PayPal. Isn't this funny? (laughs) Yeah. We have PayPal, but, you know, we also have Venmo. Yeah, Venmo... PayPal doesn't have enough money, so... Yeah, they need, they don't want the competition, so they just buy it. Yes, yeah, so Venmo is a mobile payment service founded in 2009, and PayPal bought them out in 2012. It's aimed at friends and family who wish to split bills for movies, dinner, rent, event tickets, etc. So it's an easy way for me and you to swap money back and forth. Sweet, Joe. I need some money. Venmo me, buddy. Yeah, that's basically what it is. <laughs> No, I was, well, being, I don't, I was I don't being for real. Well, I don't have a Venmo account. Me neither. So, <laughs> okay, then, uh, then I got you got twenty bucks coming your way in Venmo. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So Let's what's going? What Venmo is. <laughs> so Venmo is changing their cur- terms and conditions and trying to offer a new arbitration clause. Hmm. So you can't sue them for something. Bingo. Interesting. So there is a way to opt out of this, and that we're going to talk about mm. that. So if you have Venmo, if you use the app, you probably recently received an email explaining that the company is making changes to its user agreement, including a fair, fairly arbi- uh, onerous uh, arbitration clause that, among other things, has you agree that you will not become a part of any kind of class action lawsuit. If You can opt out, but they don't make it easy. Hmm. Why would they be scared of a class action lawsuit? Hmm. <laughs> Surely they're not doing anything sketchy behind the curtain. I know that's kind of that's crazy to be this that they need to take that kind of forward action. Well, I guess maybe their whole thing is data mining people's oh, it has habits to. of sending money to. Well, it makes me think that yeah, they need to be sued, or they're doing something that allows them to be sued. Yeah. And now they're entering that clause. Uh, yeah, for all of a sudden, just uh, out of nowhere. Yeah, there was something else we were talking about in the office the other day, maybe even yesterday, about how people are railroaded into not being able to protect themselves. Yes. Well, huh. here's here's a prime example of it. So, uh, hmm. so here's here's what you need to know and how to if you want to opt out of this uh, arbitration clause. Here's how you do it. So you have to go on the Venmo website, and they actually have a form that you have to download and print out. You have to fill out the entire form, and you have to mail it, yes, through the physical U.S. Postal Service, to PayPal Incorporated Attention Litigation Department, uh, reply Venmo opt-out notice, and the address is 2211 North 1st Street, San Jose, California, 95131. You have to use a 12-point... 
third type of margin. And <laughs> fold it three times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, and send it on a Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> Literally using snail mail. Yes. Oh, but I wonder, that can't possibly be to discourage people. Well, no, not at all. So it gets better. So th- there's two notes to take away from this. First, there is a time limit, which is laid out at the bottom of the form. In short, if you accepted the user agreement for the first time on or after May 23rd of this year, then you have to have the form postmarked up to 30 days after that date. If you've been on Venmo, Venmo member longer, you have until June 22nd of this year to get that paperwork sent in. Wow. The second, if you want to be sure, it's probably a good idea not to just drop the form in the mailbox. Instead, send it with a trace, or like a tracking number, or even better, have someone sign for it. This will cost more, but you will foresee yourself possibly needing to take Venmo to court any time in the future, especially if you plan to use the service extensively, and it pays to be sure. So pay that couple extra bucks, get a tracking number and a signature required, so that way Venmo can't say, oh, we didn't get it, so you're out of luck, and you go, right here. <laughs> wow. That's craziness. Yeah, so... Uh, I, I mean, it, I don't understand, because it seems... Somebody was telling me, like, uh, there was a class action lawsuit, and you just had to email and provide your information or something like that. Like, it's super simple, and they're like, hey, you need to check in. It had something to do with milk. Yeah, yeah, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, and I, w- I thought it was a scam, so I sent it to you because it was something to do with milk. And right. And where uh, we work with the USDA and the child nutrition program. Right. We serve milk in, like, our after-school programs and our daycares. Uh, we have to. Right. And um, I got an email. I was like, ah, what the heck's going on here? Yeah, that one, that one was legit. But, I mean, it's as simple as just saying yes. Email, reply to the email, and here's our data for the USDA. Right. You know, not even our data, just our USDA customer number and, you know, whatever. It's like two things. Right. Done. And now this one's craziness with dates and stuff. Yeah. Ah, oh boy. That sounds sketchy, Joe. Well, that... If they make it that hard, it's sketchy, I Well, think. this goes into that terms and conditions that mm-hmm. nobody ever reads. Yep. It just slips right through the cracks. Yeah, I'm not getting them much. It's okay. <laughs> I don't care if you are trying to give me 20 bucks, Joe. <laughs> Not worth it. <laughs> no. Hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else? On, I mean, if you got Venmo, I guess you better check into that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Might be some, worth it. Yeah, there's something going on there that's it's not up to par. Three good stories. I like it. This seems a weird legal argument that you can just have people sign away their ability to file mm-hmm. a lawsuit. It's like, oh, he signed a paper, and then I killed him. The paper said I could kill him if I wanted. Yeah. So I'm not. I can't be charged with murder now. Wow. This went from Joe trying to give me <laughs> 20 bucks to now you're killing somebody. Yeah. <laughs> they the plot the thickens. Yeah. You know what? They a plot twist. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, Justin. Or just sue him. I, yeah. My neighbors tried to sue me, but he and I signed a thing. That we wouldn't sue each other. That, yeah, yeah. He wasn't gonna sue me, but then I did something really messed up. Yeah, cause I, I, and it has to be date specific, and he didn't melt right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he sent it out on Friday, and I told him uh, I'd only accept it if he met it out on Thursday. <laughs> wow. This is craziness. Yeah. Huh. Okay. I have to get rid of him, though. <laughs> Do you have it? Yep. Send me really? 20. Let's try it out. Send me 20 bucks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, already then. <laughs> Bloody brilliant. <laughs> <coughs> oh, no. I'm not getting it. <laughs> okay. All right. Dang. Come on. <coughs> Joe, now you got me coughing. <laughs> laughing too hard okay uh tip of the week yes i was trying to remember for you, I didn't, we were talking product review with justin there so i got confused for a second so big tip of the week here yes it's a tip of the week slash parental yeah. alert and we were talking about this before the show and man i'm glad my kids are teenagers and slightly responsible <sighs> yes yeah, so it's a rough deal out there so i seen this come across my facebook news feed yesterday uh one of the local teachers posted hey look at be Attention parents, be on the lookout for this app. Uh, it's basically just a... Uh, <laughs> how, do, how do I want to put this? It's bad news if you have to think about how to put it. Yeah, it's basically just this wasteland of just cyberbullying like on steroids. Mm-hmm. So this also wonderful, and I'm saying that sarcastically, app is called Yik Yak. And 
and their website is I just had it pulled up here. The Yak is back. Yeah. Yikyak.com. Find your herd. H U R D. Yeah, so basically this is a quote unquote anonymous app that lets you connect with people anyone within five miles. Why would you want to? That's my thought. Because this mean, just has bad idea written Here's all over the problem it. though. And everybody this statistic is one hundred percent true, founded and based, you know, in scientific evidence for a long time now. The human brain does not fully develop until twenty six years old. I'm just not quite sure if I'm there yet. But I, okay. I agree with you. <laughs> I never did really reach that stage. That's also a proven fact. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, a 12-year-old should not be able to make these kind of decisions on what is responsible right, or ethical right, or morally acceptable. Exactly. When it comes time to disclose, A, their location. Mm -hmm. This is what bothers me with Snapchat. Snapchat can disclose your location, and I know we've talked about this. But disclose their location. Do it anonymously. <laughs> And then have conversations online with people that they have no idea who they are, what their real intentions are, without their parents being aware. So, parents. Here we are with Yik Yak. Oh, gosh, it's crazy. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just going to say this as somebody that works with kids in an educational setting and a daycare setting and everything else. And one of the things that really bothers me is, like, the bullying just never ends. Well, that's the parents' fault. Parents, take your kid's phone in the evening, turn it off, put it on a shelf, make that the charging place, and make your kid have downtime away from their phone, and or a computer. Right. Play a board game with them. Have family dinner without technology. There's a lot of ways you can stop the bullying and have right. some parenting. Right. Well, and that's the thing. They, they rely on the schools and the uh, app developers and all that. To, and blame to everybody else. You had to play parent, like, time out. No. Yeah. No. Have, have, you know, dedicate one day that's technology-free in the evening. And not only is it good for the kids, it'll be good for the parents. Yeah. As a parent, and that's why I, you know I don't have TV, and I, I dang, I forgot to bring your projector back. Yeah, <laughs> still haven't used it in a month. Racing yeah. season started, so I'm with you. Yeah, and you need it. All right, I'll, <laughs> I'll bring it back tomorrow. Okay, but you know what I mean. That's one of the great things. I don't miss it. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, but yeah. Yik Yak has an entire page dedicated to mental health resources. Well, trust with, me. With a hotline you can call and that's tips. Easy, for easy to do to cover their bases. Yep. Well, they needed it. <laughs> yeah. So I went on to this gut pile yesterday. After I read that, I was like, okay, I have to see what this is about. And see I think that's an exclusive Roan County term, gut pile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that pretty much explains this. Yeah. So you can, like I said, you can anonymously, quote unquote anonymously, connect with everyone within a five mile radius. And when I say everyone, literally anybody and everybody. A, how does it really know you're within five miles? It it okay. So you download the app. Yeah. It's only available on iOS. So I had to borrow Cena's iPad. Oh, lucky her. Yeah. So you download the app, and here's where I'm. This is a little tip for the kiddies. It's not anonymous, <laughs> and here's how it's not. You open the app. First thing it does is, hey, give us your phone number so we can send you a verification code uh -huh. to make sure you're human. Guess what? All that nonsense you've been posting now it's linked to you. Yep. So it's not anonymous. Wow. It can't be traced back to you. So it does that. And then the next thing that pops up, it goes, hey, we need your location. Mm -hmm. So you have to enable location settings on that app. And then as soon as you do, it puts your dot on the map and says, it gives you a circle. It says, okay, you can communicate with everybody in this. I'm just curious because we live in rural West Virginia. Yeah. How many people were on if within oh, your five miles? It was. Was it real? Yes. No way. Yes. High school kids were using it, and man, I tell you what. Yeah, you're I'll within five miles of the high school, aren't you? Yeah, I'm within a mile of it, yeah. Yeah, so you'd get all that. Yeah, so I, I, pu I pulled it up about 12, 31 o'clock yesterday. I was only at five seconds, and I would just live, and I was like, you know what? If, if my kid posted any any of that stuff, like with the first, because I think you can see like up to ten topics, and then you just keep scrolling oh, down. Oh, hold on, hold on. There used to be an app that was like this. It was uh, not an app, but a website. Huh. I had to check it out once because a parent said there was some information about our topics. Yes. 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 They're like, hey, you need to go on this website because, and it was like a bulletin board. Yep. People just voice complaints or yep. 
Yep. It's crazy. Well, this, it's, this is the dumpster fire. That and it was our Jackson like County. They're like, hey, your Jackson County program is mentioned. You might go check it out. And I was like, and I did. And actually, I didn't. I had one of the people that worked for me that were more familiar. They're like, yeah, we cruise that all the time to get local rumors and gossip and stuff. And I was like, are we on there? Like, yeah, but it's nothing to worry about. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, good. Wow. Yeah, so so literally, I was on there for five seconds, and I would just live. It's just like people, I mean, just not even being bashful about it. I mean, they weren't saying who they was, but they was, like, calling out these people, these yeah. kids at the high school, was like, oh, use no. their first and last names. It's like, so-and-so said this, or so-and-so did that. And it's like, so-and-so's all whatever. And it's like, whoa, 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 wow. whoa. Yeah. I was like, okay, but this <sighs> isn't, like, a whole field of red flags yeah. because now – What's stopping me from going there? And, and I mean, you can report users and report yeah, posts yeah, and stuff yeah. like that, but it's too late once it's out there. Yeah, but it's like, okay, from the I'm thinking the creeper value. What's stopping some creeper on there mm-hmm. to just now that they know that that's where all the kids are? Mm, no, thank you. Wow. Yeah. There's and no, it shows their location. Yeah, and, and it gets because now it said like it would post and it said this post was made less than a mile away yeah. or this post was made two miles away so now you're even like almost given the exact location of the kid so you could come downtown and your location would follow you yes and it would reset that boundary yeah mm-hmm. okay did did you have neighbors that were on it not that i know of or was it just all high school traffic it looked like all high school traffic yeah or it better be the way. <laughs> well here's my point <laughs> because you could drive around and yeah. pinpoint Hold on, did it show who, where the user was when they made the comment? No, it just it gave mileage. It well, that's what I mean. Could you like? No, l- I look, let's assume like it y- it came from within, like it showed like a house, or it was you know like a mile away from you, going away from the high school, and you could drive that direction and be like, oh, you're you know within three hundred yards of the person that said it. Now I don't think it would do that because uh, it said like less than a mile, so uh-huh. I don't think it would like help you pinpoint okay. exactly. Yeah, that's less scary, but but still. But still, you know the high schoolers are you know bulk of stuff because it shows them lit up right yeah yeah because well and i tell you huh. one of the conversations was hey we made it to facebook and there was a bunch of people commenting it's like so they said yeah so and so uh yeah we're on facebook your parents are finding out delete the app now and then somebody else said well who posted it? and they said well it was this teacher that posted it on facebook mm-hmm. she's the one that leaked it out wow like, yeah but that shouldn't be happening, Joe, because it says right here that's against the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Identi- identifying people is not allowed. <laughs> Do not use full names uh-huh. or any nicknames. But it breaks the rules. Well, then I must have took a blow to the head yesterday and like uh, when I was reading it because there was way too many comments. about. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. So, and I just... Uh, I scary just, stuff. Yeah, it's scary and it's like... I'm glad Why that is this I'll even a thing? I I'm, mean, I'm going to ask my kids if they use it. Yeah, Yik Yak, or even heard of it. Yeah. This is like, why? what good value is this thing? I mean, this is just a creeper's playground in my book. Because mm-hmm. now you are you know that you're going to deal with locals, and now that it's very popular with underage kids, that, that just screams no good. Oh, gosh, yeah. And apparently this company, they had tried this before several years ago and got a bunch of bad publicity, go figure, and it went away, and then another company went and bought them up and tried, and are trying it again. It's like, did you not learn the lesson the first time? Ah, <sighs> boy. There's this huge list of stuff that's not allowed, and I'm sure there's no crackdown at all. Oh, I guarantee enforcement I've, whatsoever. Well, I yeah, guarantee I mean, I've seen it all yesterday, yesterday morning. Yeah. Probably yeah. afternoon. Kids go down to this list and like, oh, that looks fine. I'll troll. No mm. trolling allowed. Well, I'm about to go troll. Again, it's one of those, it's probably terms and conditions nobody reads yeah. or cares. <laughs> Interesting. Were you, did you see names and stuff and you're just embarrassed for them? Or, or yeah, it's yeah. like, they was calling out the kids like you know so and so did this or so and so said did that or mm-hmm. or so and so is this I'm like wait a minute that's when it gets rough when you're like oh my gosh yeah it's like really this is yep so kitties just a little tip of the day for you all it's not anonymous you can say it's anonymous but when you yeah. post your phone number to send you that verification code guess what it's linked to you yeah you're welcome 
Well, yeah. I, I don't think kids kids have less of a care than we do. We're I think the older you are, the more suspicious you are. And for kids, it's just natural because they've been able to do whatever they want online forever. Right. Yeah, you know, it's all they know. Well, it's one of those. As soon as I seen that post, it's like, okay, I have to look into this and see what this, see if it's really what it's all chalked up to be, or yeah, or what. Because the the person that posted it, it was was like I said, it was a school teacher. So I mean, they should yeah. they should know they're they're dealing with this, you know, yep. firsthand. So I was like, you know, maybe maybe. This yeah. wasn't as bad as what they said. And all no, it in my opinion, it was just as bad, if not worse, than what I was expecting. Wow. And they say on their site that we want to be the world's dominant mode of local communication. Oh, they're doing that all right. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Crazy how that spreads. But, I mean, you know, rumor, rumor meals have been popular forever. Right. Made famous by the office water fountain in the local pub. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they like encourage anonymity and discourage any like real life meeting. Yeah. It's just like, what's the point exactly of talking to strangers? Yeah. Randomly. Yes. That gossip without yeah. ramifications. Hmm. Huh. So now, like, instead of looking so at. So, Joe, on your five star review, where does this go? I mean, because A is popular. But well, then I, again. I called it a dumpster fire. So, is that really. <laughs> and a, a gut pile. Yeah, and a gut pile. Is that really. <laughs> <laughs> just, just making sure. Wow, so parents out there, pay attention. Yik yak. Yik if it's yak. on your kids' phones, yeah. be aware. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like talking to some parents are just like, yeah, what can you do? And that's their attitude. Because I've had, we mentioned this to a couple of our parents, be like, listen, you know, we had issues. Yeah. But. Well, and, and when they say, what can I do? Well, well here's an idea. Did the kid buy the phone? No. Did I say, does, the kid pay, does the kid pay for their yeah. phone bill? Do no. due diligence. What? That's what you're going to do. Be a parent. Yeah. yeah. All right. Man, is that all you got? Yeah, that's that's the tip of the week. Parents be on the lookout for yik yak. There's no good that comes out of that. Okay. Hold on, let me write this one here real quick. I'm gonna say it's getting serious. Dave's taking notes. All right. Ooh, sorry, hit my mic. Joe, you gotta catch yours. All right. Happy show 100th. Oh, 100th right. show, yeah, from me to you. Thought we'd uh, do a little uh, 100th celebration, a century mark. All right. We do an unbo unboxing. Here unboxing. There you go. <laughs> a little, uh, what's it called when you do the sound? ASMR? Whoa. AMRS? Wide buzz. Ooh. There you go. Nice. Thank you very much. It's very sir. fancy uh, re uh, recycled paper, uh, wrapping paper. Yeah. <laughs> so product review coming up. Test out your wise buds. Now you know I don't like doing product reviews on gifts. That's all right. <laughs> it's wise, man. What could go wrong? Well, this is true. Wise <laughs> has sent us some uh, Bluetooth headphones. Wireless. Cool. Thank you, Dave. You're very oh, welcome. That's awesome. 100 shows in, and uh, yeah. Oh, man. This looks sleek when you open it Earbuds. up. Earbuds. So, yeah. Ooh, sweat resistant. Nice little pod you could easily carry around in your pocket. Or lose. <laughs> yeah. You know me too well. I'm curi curious to see how long Justin's takes to charge up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might be like, hey. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you're going to see how long it takes for me to lose the yeah, yeah. charging brick. Oh, it lights up when you open it. Yeah, it shows you how much charge up. That's how my – I have uh, Galaxy Buds, but uh, mine shows green, yellow, and red for how much charge is in the thing. This feels solid. feels well made. Let's see how Justin's doing a real unboxing here. I didn't realize. Yeah. I just now hit me. He's doing like a – Play by play here. All right, pull them out. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Walk us through it, Justin. Yeah, just appearance so far. Everything is very sleek. Looks like just the one ear hole size. You know, some of them have those different mm -hmm. uh, like rubber things with different sizes, but yeah, standard size. Don't know how to turn them on, but. You should just, uh, mine work, you just turn on your Bluetooth and it gives you an option and then it'll ask you to pair and it might use a code. Right. Well, Samsung, Android makes it super easy to pair with stuff. Yes. So, even yeah. the case feels, I mean, the, the casing feels pretty solid. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Very. yeah, I don't know how for me, I have, like I say, I have uh, one of the Samsung Buds. Mine are pretty old now, but they are very similar. So and it does little features. You tap the side of them to like pause a song or to answer or hang up or whatever. But Very uh, nice. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. 100 show. Happy 100. <laughs>
You know me too well. Well, I talked to you guys a couple weeks ago and said, hey, you guys use earbuds or whatever, and both of you said no. So I thought... Yeah, I had some beef ones that were just a pain in the butt. And yeah, thought you might enjoy these. And they bit the dust. This is good timing. Yeah. Oh, there are some other adjustable sizes in here. Yeah, mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff in here. All right, well, next week we'll do a uh, couple things. Do a review of these, maybe, or two weeks. Yeah. Well, it's probably three weeks because we got Justin for the next one. Oh, that's right. So Justin well, no, transition. we can do two, depending on how yeah. long Justin wants to test his phone out before he does a review. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So next week will be Justin's transition to Android yep. from Apple. And then after that, we'll, that'll give you a couple weeks to get your buds working and try them out. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Sounds good. Well, Mark. gentlemen, show 100. Bam. Good show. Century Mark. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you got some toys to play with. All right. And I and I'm sporting the new Wise Watch. Ooh. Yeah. And uh, we hold on, we got a race this weekend, right? Yeah. I, I just brought it to Justin. Fun Run. It's A and M Digital Technology sponsoring the Fun Run. And right. and there will be a review coming soon for the watch. So. Awesome. And I actually had Sadie help me test with it this weekend. So. That's wonderful. Okay. All right, Joe. If anybody has any questions about anything, I know. Uh, bigger scale stories this week but if they need to get a hold of you and they want any help with uh i know you've been doing a lot of security camera work and stuff like that yeah but anything related to it how they get a hold of you you can give us a call at our office at 304-927-3588 check out our website at amdigitaltechnologies.com or follow us on social media on facebook youtube and twitter at am digital tech for all that and be sure to subscribe to the podcast help desk with joe and dave we're on all the major platforms and all of our episodes are hosted by anchor.fm Nice. Okay. Well, hey, everybody out there, shop local. A&M Digital Technologies, one of our local uh, businesses and owned by Joe and Cena McDonald. And any technology work you need, security cameras all the way across the board, and uh, they power everything here behind Patch. And now we're 100 shows in here for our uh, help desk with Joe. So, so excited. And next week will be 101. So, thanks for joining us. Tune in next week, and uh, we'll be back for more technology news for Joe, Justin, and myself. Everybody have a great week. <laughs>